This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michelle Crandall, Fremont, California, August 2007. Letters of Two Brides by Honoré de Balzac. Letter 50. Madame de l'Estorade to Madame de Macumer. Louise, can it be that, with all your knowledge of the deep-seated mischief wrought by the indulgence of passion, even within the heart of marriage, you are planning a life of wedded solitude? Having sacrificed your first husband in the course of a fashionable career, would you now fly to the desert to consume a second? What stores of misery you are laying up for yourself! But I see from the way you have set about it that there is no going back. The man who has overcome your aversion to a second marriage must, indeed, possess some magic of mind and heart, and you can only be left to your illusions. But have you forgotten your former criticism on young men? Not one, you would say, but has visited haunts of shame, and has besmirched his purity with the filth of the streets. Where is the change, pray, in them or in you? You are a lucky woman to be able to believe in happiness. I have not the courage to blame you for it though the instinct of affection urges me to dissuade you from this marriage. Yes, a thousand times yes, it is true that nature and society are at one in making war on absolute happiness, because such a condition is opposed to the laws of both. Possibly also because heaven is jealous of its privileges. My love for you forebodes some disaster to which all my penetration can give no definite form. I know neither whence nor from whom it will arise. But one need be no prophet to foretell that the mere weight of a boundless happiness will overpower you. Excess of joy is harder to bear than any amount of sorrow. Against him I have not a word to say. You love him, and in all probability I have never seen him. But some idle day I hope you will send me a sketch, however slight, of this rare fine animal. If you see me so resigned and cheerful, it is because I am convinced that, once the honeymoon is over, you will both, with one accord, fall back into the common track. Some day, two years hence, when we are walking along this famous road, you will exclaim, Why, there is the chalet which was to be my home for ever, and you will laugh your dear old laugh, which shows all your pretty teeth. I have said nothing yet to Louis. It would be too good an opening for his ridicule. I shall tell him simply that you are going to be married, and that you wish it be kept secret. Unluckily, you need neither mother nor sister for your bridal evening. We are in October now, like a brave woman, you are grappling with winter first. If it were not a question of marriage, I should say you were taking the bull by the horns. In any case, you will have in me the most discreet and intelligent of friends. That mysterious region, known as the center of Africa, has swallowed up many travelers, and you seem to me to be launching on an expedition which, in the domain of sentiment, corresponds to those where so many explorers have perished, whether in the sands or at the hands of natives. Your desert is, happily, only two leagues from Paris, so I can wish you quite cheerfully a safe journey and speedy return. End of chapter 50